The Cardinal Gods Ra, Odin, Zeus, Christ, and many more all have one thing in common. They are easily the most powerful god, if not the most renowned within their respective religions. Now, what if all of these gods existed within Damachi? But not only that, Ra, the sun god of Egyptian mythology, its head honcho, if you will. What if Bel was not only descent from this god, similar to how he had been from Zeus in canon, but had also been a part of his familia, gaining his favor and blessing? Well, that's what we're going over today. So, if you want to see Bell's adventures with his new familia, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Also, I would like to take a quick minute to shout out our members. If you yourself want to become a member, click the join button or consider going down to the link in the description, which will take you to the membership page. Also, we currently do have channel merch. Link will, as always, be in the description. And for said channel merch, I would like to thank Streamlabs for sponsoring that. So, if you want to check out the channel merch, as I said, link will be in the description. And if you want to make merch of your own, Streamlabs link will be down there too. So, without further ado, roll the intro. Outside of the dungeon, a day or two should have passed by now, and obviously the head of the Ra familia, Ra himself, would be worried not only about his familiar member, but his grandson. Obviously, staying in this uh, in the dungeon this long is it's impossible, at least for someone at, at his level. Like, he knows Bell levels up really quickly, but his stamina should have run out a long time ago. And his worries only came to fruition when another god came to his familiar home. As we refer to him, Lord Take. You know who I'm talking about. Lord Take would not even say a single word himself except apologize as he shows his familiar members forward. He had three familiar members all of you are more than, more than familiar with. The person that would step forward is Makoto. She would then apologize herself as a larger male would step out and explain everything. He'd say that they were being chased down and in really rough condition. They needed to get out of the dungeon. They didn't mean to lead the pack of animals into Belle's party. But if he's gonna be honest, he'd do it again. He doesn't know Belle, he doesn't know Ra. He does know his own familiar members though and would do anything to save them, even if it means his own life. Obviously, this would infuriate the sun god, but he would relate. He would want his own familia to put their lives ahead of others. But not everyone is as self-centered as this man. Most would actually try to help. Obviously, now knowing that they're probably on the lower floors, still fighting those monsters that were led into him, Ra would... He would request something. He would request that Lord Take's familia go with a bunch of upper levels from his own familia to go and scout the floors. Obviously, being the floors that Bell and Aisha had been last seen on. Lord Take wouldn't even need to agree as his whole familia would self-agree because they do still feel guilt for what they did. Once again, they didn't necessarily mean to put Bell and Aisha within that situation. So, on the raw familia's behalf, they would be searching for the most part, going lower and lower by floor, until they would eventually get to the 18th floor, where they believe the Sword Princess to currently be. 
The reason they had come down all the way to the 18th floor is because they teamed up with some runners from the Loki Familia to defeat the floor boss so that they could make it down as well. Maybe they had figured that Lady Eyes was down here with the rest of the Loki Familia. They would have made their way down here. This is a safe zone after all. And it would come to fruition because as they entered the camp, they would be let known that Bella and Aisha got here in a near death condition, but they're all right now. That explained that Bell and Aisha are currently off with some of the Loki familiar members and the Sword Princess to go visit a nearby, a nearby in Dungeon City or town, if you want to so call it. This wouldn't really change too much from canon, as there's nothing really to change except that Hestia or the other gods had not come down to the dungeon meaning there would be no problem with the dungeon sending in the dungeon boss, and there's no one really beneath level 3 except Bell himself. So those adventurers that originally captured Hestia, they don't mean anything in this scenario. So when they do eventually finish off and head back to the surface, it would be pretty peaceful. Obviously, Bell would be apologized to by people like Mikoto, but he would shrug it off. It was a learning experience to say the least. If you ever need to, you could get through floors quickly, so all they did was teach him something he needed to know in any ways. Aisha, on the other hand, she's not as chill about it. She would actually scream at them, maybe cuss at them, maybe give them a little bit of the Aisha torture. So yeah, We'd move on and see them back at the Familia home, where Ra would actually show a lot of appreciation towards his grandson, being glad that he had in fact not died. It is more than visual that Ra was stressed in the time that Bell was gone. This should have been at least three or four days, and you could see that the god had not gotten a single ounce of sleep. The, the sheer amount of exhaustion was visible to you so moving on this is where we would initially have had a time skip but instead i think here we should push bell to train a bit more obviously now he would be spending a lot more time with aisha instead of with tione tiona or even eyes so for the most part it would be dungeon diving Obviously, there's not much story in just talking about dungeon diving. So this is where we'd have the initial time skip. We would push Bell all the way up to level 3 by the end of this time skip, and the altercation with Apollo's Familia would go much different. After insulting the god Ra, obviously Bell would feel pride to stand up for his grandfather, and would actually say that if they have something to say about his grandfather, do it with their hands. And that's exactly what proceeded to happen. Bell would beat the ever-living shit out of most of them there, and would even give the level 3 a run for his money. But obviously the level 3 is still petty enough to believe he could defeat Bell. So the entire Apollo game situation at the start of Season 2 will still occur. So, let's get into that. Obviously, the Apollo games would be really unfair with Ross Familia being full of level 5s and similar things, so he'd set up a clause. They would each be allowed to enter any amount of level 3 or lower adventurers, and the winner of the competition will compensate. Obviously, these are both really powerful and really rich gods and i don't think apollo in this situation would even dare think of trying to take bell from ra because it's pretty well known that this is ra's grandson obviously he'd be useful but i think we could make a we could make a line in between where apollo would settle for bell joining one of his parties if they so lose obviously not switching familias just working under apollo if you want to so say and when it comes down to it raw would accept and 
he knows exactly who Apollo is. Apo Apollo isn't that nice of a god, at least not in Damachi. So, what would end up happening is Ra would demand the the Apollo familia be disbanded if he was to win. Now, stakes are on the line and there is a lot different from canonical view, so I will add that a bunch of lower tier characters that aren't even worth mentioning would help with the main adventurers or people we'll be focusing on being Bell and Aisha and possibly two other people from Aisha's familiar and canon that you might know being Samra and Lena. They were originally a part of the Ishtar familia, but as I said at the start of the series, Ishtar is being replaced by Ra initially, so what's going to perspire is they would join in on this. They themselves should be between level 2 and 3 and would substitute some of the characters we had in canon. Obviously, instead of the elf destroying the wall with magical swords, since we do not have access to that, I would have it so that either the majority of the lower level forces attack that specific wall to draw attention or even a magical base or even maybe bell himself to shoot a fire slash sun ball at the wall destroying it giving them an opening on the other hand they would instead of having lily transform just to open the gate they'd have to charge through that hole so while the majority of the forces on both sides are keeping each other billy a uh, busy the main four being bell Ishtar, uh, or sorry, Bell, Aisha, not Ishtar, Samura, and Lena, the four of them, going to actually attack the main castle and defeat the king. This would go just as well as you'd most likely expect it to, and would be pretty similar. Since they have a majority force to handle the majority force of Apollo, they wouldn't need Wells and Lily to hang back. On the other hand, when it does come down to it, I'd say that Samura and Lena would probably split off with the other two adventurers that seem to be around level 3 of the Apollo Familia, the two females, everyone knows who I'm talking about, to take care of them. While Aisha and Bell themselves would go even further into the castle. Upon entering the castle, they'd discover many adventurers and obviously the king, but Aisha would easily dispose of these lower adventurers slash Apollo Familia members, while Bell would be left to face the Apollo member level 3, but him being up on the same level would result in the fight being pretty even, and eventually with pure persistence, Bell surficing and coming out pretty unscathed, using his sunballs at that capacity really injured his opponent and barely drained on his stamina. But then on top of that, it sufficed as a distraction for him to make way and actually beat on his opponent. So it wouldn't be a scenario where it was a close match at all. No Argonaut skill was needed and no plot armor. It's just that Bell was actually tough enough to handle this fight. So shortly after, the Bell or the Apollo Familia would be disbanded and two of the members from said Apollo Familia would now join the ranks of the Raw Familia. Obviously being Daphne and Cassandra, the two girls that served under Apollo. So this adds us a little filler bit in where in canon, Cassandra had forgotten her favorite toy or fucking pillow or something, which would result in them wanting to return to the old building. Obviously, them not living there and living in Raw's building, which would technically speaking be in the red light district, but technically not. Let's not go over that too much. So, they would head back to the old Apollo Familia home, and they would get it with not much fuss. Obviously, giving us time for Daphne and Cassandra to bond with Belle. And it turns out that most people actually get along with him. Now that we have a steady number of level 3s and Aisha actually being pushed to almost level 4, Raw would put them in a party together. 4 level 3s should be sufficeable for a party, at least for now. They should be able to just push up all the way to the 17th floor, obviously not needing to go to the boss because that might be a little overboard. 
but yeah that's gonna be it for this part guys i really do hope y'all did enjoy next part we will be going over the rest of season two and maybe kicking off season three i got some interesting things going on for that since ishtar was a main focus for the latter part of season two and her not existing within this timeline will have things be a lot different maybe involving freya a little more or maybe some other characters also, all the art in this video or in the thumbnail and even the preview was done by Zylo Arts. His link will be in the description. Check him out. He is an amazing artist. He posts all his stuff on Twitter. So yeah, um, these videos are dominantly edited by our boy Steak and our intro and outro was created by the Dragon Lord. So without further ado, roll that beautiful outro. One, two, three, let's go. Subscribe for more. Yada yada does it.